From first light every morning, a new procession arrives in despair. Tired, starving. These people have been marching for days, traveling through a barren wilderness to get here, coming from villages hundreds of miles away because there is no food or water left. Salimo's walked for five days to get here. She hasn't eaten for two days and tells me she's no longer able to produce breast milk. To feed her baby girl, she says she adds sugar to whatever water she can find. The rains have just failed again. Almost a million people in Somalia now forced from their land. Mohammed tells me all the cattle back home died and the wells have run dry. Some people in his group were too weak with hunger to finish the journey. They had to leave them behind. Fatima tells me she's already watched one child die. Now the baby son she holds is wasting away. My child is starving. He is vomiting and has diarrhea. He has a fever and is malnourished. This is Kahari Camp near Dolo in western Somalia. At the start of the year, there were just 60,000 people here. Now there are 146,000. Another 500 turned up this morning. This is their last hope for help. These people are here because they are desperate and they're hungry, but there is not enough food to go around. At the moment, the number of people being driven here by the drought is rising faster than the aid can get in. There is barely enough to feed even half of those who are in need. People come here to escape death, but death is never far away. This grave is for Ali's baby boy who died last night. He stops to say a prayer. The sticks on top are to keep wild animals from digging at the body. This is the fourth child he has buried since the drought began. My son became sick. He had diarrhea and stomach pain, and then he stopped eating. The mother wonders how she will keep her remaining children alive. We don't have food or water. We don't have even the means to collect water. We don't have proper shelter. And I have nothing to cook with. It is the children who are suffering most. Almost half of those under five in Somalia are now malnourished. The most serious cases are taken to a stabilization unit. This little girl is called Salika, severely dehydrated and malnourished. She is four years old, but she's now the weight of a one-year-old. Ismail just had his first birthday. Doctors were not sure he would survive even a day when they found him, and without treatment, he would not have survived. This one ward has capacity for 16. They're now seeing more than that number in a day. Malnourishment makes children far more susceptible to diseases like pneumonia, tuberculosis and cholera, common causes of death here, all preventable. The medical team checks for early signs of starvation. Arm measurements show green for safe, yellow for warning. This little boy is red, another child dangerously malnourished. The hospital is seeing hundreds of malnourished children every single day right now. Here, they can be treated with medication. That's enough to keep them alive. The problem is they'll then be discharged back into a country that is on the edge of a famine. Aid groups give food to the most in need, nutritionally dense supplements. For some, it'll be the first time they've eaten in days. But within months, the same children are starving again. The bigger picture that is having a stable uh, food supply for these people will be the ideal factor that will help uh, will help will help them to survive. Until there's enough food, you're going to still be treating malnourished children. Definitely, absolutely, absolutely. Until we have enough supply in terms of uh, food uh, food communities, this will be there. And medication alone won't be enough. From above, we can see the damage done after two years without rain. Rivers are dry, homes abandoned. The crops have failed in the fields and a third of the country's livestock has already died from starvation. The only source of food and income for millions here. The UN World Food Programme is trying to feed as many as they can with what they have. They're caring for more than three and a half million in Somalia now and trying to scale up urgently. 
What we're facing really is not just another drought. This is a historic drought, the worst in over 40 years. And the world needs to pay attention because of the sheer magnitude of needs. But this catastrophe is now exacerbated by rising costs of food, fuel and security. Getting aid in is harder while millions are being pushed over the edge. So people have lost their, their livelihood, like they have lost their animals, they have lost their crops. And again, the little money that they had, they cannot afford to purchase what they need for, for, for daily use. The hardship is hitting Somali people from every angle all at once. The unfairness is they are not responsible for any of this, but they all pay the highest price. What we are witnessing is the beginning of a preventable tragedy. Not hidden away, but happening now in front of the eyes of the world. At the camp, we see another new arrival, a woman held up by those around her. Something is wrong. Suddenly, she collapses in front of us. The woman in front of her holds a bundle. Then all becomes apparent. The woman has given birth along the way, then somehow walked the remaining five kilometers. It is a boy. He's healthy, and his name is Abdi Najib Gulid. What life will this world offer him?